Voting is over in the UK election. The final result has not been called yet, but the exit polls are looking very good for Boris Johnson and his Conservative Party. The CBC's Renee Filipponi is on this story. She's joining me live from London, where it is very late at night. Renee, first of all, the exit polls have Boris Johnson and the Conservatives with a big lead, but you're also starting to see results now from a few, few ridings. What's the latest where you are? Well, our understanding right now is that the results we are seeing are mimicking what we have seen in these exit polls. So we'll go through those numbers first. Uh, this is a historic night uh, in a good way for the Conservative Party and a bad way for the Labour Party. Uh, if the projections are true, the Conservatives are on track to win 368 seats. That's up 50 and their best performance since Margaret Thatcher in 1987. For the Labour Party, they are down uh, 20, uh, sorry, they are uh, down 71 seats with 191. That's the worst performance since 1935. So these are big moments if these numbers hold true throughout the night. Now, at this point, we only have the results from 12 ridings. This is a slow process. All the ballots have to be counted by hand in the 600 ridings across the UK. There are, uh, is one interesting riding that has been called so far that really tells the story of what this election has been all about. It is a labor stronghold, has been for 50 years. It's in the northeast of the country. It is also a riding that voted to leave the EU. These are the ridings that Boris Johnson was targeting with his get Brexit done message. And clearly that message worked because he was able to pick up that riding and win. And that is where it appears the Conservatives will be able to make uh, and win this majority that they've been looking for. There's also another storyline developing out of Scotland uh, and that's where it looks like Labour may also be losing some of its seats as well to the Scottish National Party. We haven't had any confirmed ridings called up there yet but that's what the exit polls are showing us at this point. Yeah it'll be interesting to see what Scotland, Scotland's reaction is going forward to a whole slew of things Brexit being uh, chief among them and this is obviously why Boris Johnson wanted this election to be called all along. What's been the reaction so far? Well, from the Labour Party, it's really a bit of a blame game, Carol. Everyone wants to understand what went wrong. For some people, they're pointing specifically to the issues that there was too much focus on Brexit. But for others, they're really placing the blame on Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, you know, there was a lot of talk throughout the campaign that he just wasn't likable. He was too far left. He was a, a communist. There were issues with anti-Semitism in the party. Uh, have a listen to John McDonnell. He is uh, one of the shadow MPs, a high-ranking member of the party and a Corbyn ally. And we knew it would be tough because Brexit has dominated this election. But, yes, if it is anywhere near this, it is extremely disappointing. We have to be honest about that. I think Brexit has dominated. It has dominated everything by the looks of it. We thought other issues could cut through and there'd be a wider debate. From this evidence, it clearly wasn't. So there will likely be conversations going forward about his leadership, Corbyn's leadership. We've also heard from the Conservative Party that if these exit polls stand, their plan is to hit the ground running, running when it comes to Brexit. On Friday, next Friday, they will put the Brexit withdrawal agreement back to Parliament again for a second reading with their plans of leaving the EU at the end of next month. All right, the CBC's Renee Filipponi live in West London, very early this morning in London.